Welcome back to yet another edition of Tequila Tales. I am Tequila Tim. Today we're talking about El Padrino Tequila. Right here, El Padrino Tequila. You're gonna hear the entire tale of this tequila, how I got conned into buying it at Total Wine, where it's made, what it's made of, what it tastes like, and if you should buy it after this break. And courtesy of Tequila Matchmaker, let's get into the production details of El Padrino de Mi Tierra Anejo. This is an 80-proof tequila made in Jalisco, the Los Altos region of the Tequila Valley, using deep well water, 100% agave in stainless steel tanks, stainless steel pots as the stills. This is aged in American white oak barrels. A lot of these Anejo tequilas you're buying, uh, you're going to see in that exact same format. It's twice distilled, stone and brick ovens are used to cook it, and it's using an autoclave with the high-pressure system. All right, break's over, and hopefully you like that little intro. I'm talking about El Padrino Tequila. Technically, it's called El Padrino de Mi Tierra, right? Yeah, that's what it's called. This is a tequila board with shots, and I'm about to use it as a weapon in an upcoming video. Uh, if I see someone comment and tell me they actually like this tequila, actually, I'm not gonna, because you can drink whatever tequila you want, whatever your heart desires. You drink, and you drink it. I will shame you for drinking tequilas uh, that were garbage, but... Life goes on, right? Life goes on. So anyways, let's talk about this bottle right here. El Padrino de Mi Tierra, right? The godfather of my land. First of all, I'll talk about the godfather later in this review, but they got no business talking about the godfather in El Padrino Tequila. And this is an Anejo, by the way, the El Padrino Anejo. And I'm gonna tell you the story in a second. I didn't know, but at home, I'd already had the spicy cucumber, right? My girlfriend bought this for a party, thought it would be good at mixed drinks, margaritas, and it actually is, because when you make a margarita, anything blends into that thing, and you're not gonna taste the tequila really anyways, unless you go really, really light. In fact, forget that, you're not gonna taste it. It's a margarita, throw anything in there. So I continue shopping, I go down the aisles, and I, I pretty much had every other bottle that they sell there, and if I didn't have it, it was garbage, or I wouldn't rebuy it. So here I am with this one. So I said, tell me a little bit more about this bottle. Tell me about this. And she says, well, it's additive free. It's not gonna taste like any of the garbage with the additives that you get in it. It's an Anejo, it's El Padrino tequila. And I didn't do any research. I did not have tequila matchmaker opened up. I wanted to get in and get out so I could go back and pick up my son at soccer practice. I hadn't been to Total Wine in a couple weeks. I go and she offers me a sample of it. I knew right away what I was getting into and then let me sample about five or six other tequilas, which was very cool, props to Total Wine. I then come home and do a little research on this to figure out what the heck could I just buy and all these people that gave it these glorified ratings. And I stumbled across Agave Talk. Great follow, by the way, shout out to Agave Talk. Friend of mine on Instagram, great follow on Instagram, good YouTube channel as well, just a solid person that knows a lot about Agave, great follow again. I don't recommend many people, but that's one of them. So thank you. And I start reading his review, hearing it on YouTube, taking notes, mental notes, and even some written notes. Dumb me, you know, again, I was in a rush, kind of in a panic going back and forth with the aisles. I think my girlfriend was getting seltzers over there and I was just trying to get something new to talk about on camera and get out. Agave talk and expose this tequila. This is a brand of total wine right? Total Wine makes it, so of course they're going to get every single award out there. You can't get it anywhere else. I shop locally here in Florida at Primo Liquors. You cannot find this bottle there, right? This is a Total Wine brand. They make it down at NOM 1438. I'm going to tell you all about that now. I mean, what you hear about NOM 1438 is absolutely going to blow your mind. Uh, if you've got a little bit of a budget, like Total Wine's got a, a big budget, you're going to be able to go down to NOM 1438 and make a brand. When you hear the kind of brands that are made and the names of them, you're gonna start being like, oh my God, like this is not a very competitive space. Now, all these brands have probably failed or probably you know, did one initial run of bottles, got picked up nowhere. They're just kind of a hobby for a rich entrepreneur somewhere. And again, I'm gonna get into NOM 1438 later. It's basically a contract manufacturing NOM. You're just gonna laugh when you hear the brand names that are popped out of that. In fact, there's only a couple brands that I own in my possession at NOM 1438. This is Los Azulejos, right here, right? Very cool bottle and packaging. They have a lot of different packaging on their bottles, right? And this is a Nejo right here. So you're gonna see that. And then they're also another brand, which is one of the coolest bottles. I know a lot of collectors have it in. 
You know the rule in tequila. The prettier the bottle, the crappier the juice, right? Pretty much everyone vibes with that. Very cool bottle here, and Azulejos makes a quality product. I don't mind their product. You know, not my favorite, but it's something drinkable and it looks real cool on your shelf as well. Now, when you get into dirty bottles and just bottles looking like crap, I don't even know where to go with it. I'm probably gonna do a top 10 prettiest bottles and crappiest tequilas in a future episode. But for now, we're talking about El Padrino Anejo Tequila. Here it is right here. If this looks familiar to you, let's take a look at what else it, it's modeled after, this bottle style. You'll recognize this in a heartbeat. Okay, does that look familiar? You've got the whole Don Julio lineup of packaging in that one. And I'm gonna skip right over Tequila Ocho and go down to the old school Casa Noble bottle. So when you take a look at this and you look at it, next to El Padrino, I mean, look, the people at Total Wine are not dumb, but they could be smarter, okay? They modeled it after some very popular bottles, right? Again, Don Julio and the old school Casa Noble shorty, not bad. My whole questioning is the El Padrino de Mi Tierra. I mean, the godfather. There's only one godfather, and that's Don Vito Corleone, okay? Nice little brand, but it just doesn't fake out a tequila purist, okay? And I'm gonna get into the tasting and everything like that. I mean, I'm doing a lot of background on this tequila, probably more than I have on any other tequila, but again, total wine custom tequilas that they're trying to sell you. you gotta watch out, you guys, you gotta watch out. Okay, so how does this taste? Let's get into the El Padrino de Mi Tierra. A Nejo review and talk about how it tastes. Now, I'm tempted to just stop this tequila review and get into the tequilas behind it and the mezcal on the left. I really, really have a lot of good tequila and this is just about a, yeah, a tenth of it. But there's just some really good bottles surrounding this and it's really hard to get into what I know is gonna be an additive bomb. Again, I've kind of spoiled it by looking at other people's reviews and read a lot now on Tequila Matchmaker, which is a great app. Download, check it out. Look down below, I had an interview with the founder not too long ago. Um, very, very useful tool if you drink tequila. So first thing, I've let this sit out for a minute. This is just a caramel and vanilla bomb. Let's see if it tastes like it. There you go, take a look at that. Tears, very viscous. It's an amber color, very light amber, not very dark for an Anejo. Oh yeah. So that right there, is why a lot of people love tequila. And I'll tell you why it's the wrong way to think about it. A lot of people come from rum or bourbon and wanna get into tequila. And they taste something like this, something that's sweet, something that hits your mouth and doesn't have a lot of burn uh, in the aftertaste. And, and that's actually wrong. When you drink something like Fortaleza here, or Arte Nam, or a Tesoro, uh, Don Fulano, Tears of Girona, at Ray Soul, some of my favorite brands, you're gonna get that burn at the end. That's what you're supposed to have. Uh, one of my great friends, Octavio, who hails from Mexico City, uh, had a tequila at my house once, and it was actually one that I will review very soon. And he had it and he said, hermano, he said, there's no burn here. This is, just not, this is not tequila. And I could not sum it up better. El Padrino here definitely has additives because you taste the sweetness and there's no afterburn, nothing. It's, it's almost like a comfortable cough syrup a swallow when you're, when you're done with it. And I know that's gonna turn a lot of people off, but there's gonna be some people that are saying, I love this. And for 30 bucks, if you love it, you're a cheap date, you know? Like, that's just what it is. And this is here meant to be an introductory tequila, but by all means, don't think every tequila tastes like this because it's very sweet. Total Wine gave it, gave it some awards, promotes it, makes a ton of money off it, I'm sure. Uh, puts it with the nice shelf uh, space out there next to some good ones and has the reps, as I saw, recommending it. The rep told me it was additive free, and then later on, 15 minutes later, the discussion said, well, you know, you're allowed to put 1% of other stuff in there too, and it's still tequila. That told me all I needed to know about how many additives were in this. So perhaps in the content below, I'll follow up and find out exactly what else is in here, but just know that this is a pretty sweet tequila that I, I don't recommend to people. Uh, if you like it, drink it. I don't tell anyone what to do. I don't be, like to be told what to do myself, but that's my El Padrino review. Check out the follow-up here. I'm doing another segment on this review right after this last sip, which, uh, gosh, I think I'm gonna move into this bad boy here, both the cigar and the uh, Ray Sol right there just to kind of get this taste out of my mouth. Stay tuned right here coming up in a few seconds is an overview of Nam 1438. This is gonna be something you're gonna laugh at. Some of these brand names are absolutely incredibly hilarious. So check it out, Nam 1438. This is my El Padrino Date Mi Tierra review. El Padrino and Nejo Tequila Review. Thanks for watching. Enjoy this last part about Nam 1438, and thanks as always for watching. Okay, just to have a quick laugh, 
um, <laughs> chuckle, laugh, whatever. At Nam 1438, this is Desiladora del Valle de Tequila Casa Maestri, which I, has that nice blue and white bottle that's all ceramic and kind of was a Clase Azul before its time, right? And I've never had it. I can't say anything bad. It looks like a cool bottle. Um, again, looks aren't everything though, right? So this here is Nam 1438 and what they produce here. Now tell me any quality tequilas you see here, right? Um, you can comment below if you see anything that you drink or that you... Uh, know about or have any reviews on or want me to review in the future please comment also it's also nice if you please comment subscribe and share with your friends we do appreciate that here at tequila tales uh, 21 seed six degree i'm just kind of go down these agave boom i mean i've seen this in stores um okay ratings i guess but you know you don't forget a label like that right it's like cartoonistic um but some of these just are you know like you've definitely seen this around right um it's it's something that You've probably seen at your local liquor store or wherever else and you remember it because it looks like a cartoon so looking at everything else here i mean you've got tequilas like big boy tequila blowfish tequila caballo azul i mean these aren't even rated like no one can even access these right this one i've seen the jaguar i've seen and i've actually heard it's an okay tequila so i can't really talk too much smack on now i'm 1438 but just keep going down right coca pura i mean I really have a hard laugh at some of these names because you can tell it's a private label distillery where if you've got some cash, you can make your own tequila, brand it, etc. Uh, Doña Celia, I do recognize this one and I do have it on my shelf. It's not a great juice. Um, I bought it because of the bottle again many, many years ago and it's largely collected dust. There's El Padrino, the one we're talking about now, one of the higher rated ones and obviously you can tell it's got uh, a lot of views because it is a total wine tequila, a total wine brand I should say. I'm only on the G's here. That's how many are made. Now, this is what I was laughing at. Hot donkey. Like, come on, man. Hot torque. Who songs? You'll see that around. Who songs is definitely around. In fact, a friend of mine drank this a lot at the local bar I went to. Not one I'd recommend. Azulejos. I talked about that in the video. Mujer Bonita. I mean, some of these just like no one's even discussed these. Painted donkey. Pink pig. Rancho Alto. Ricarda Amor tequila. Like what? Like unreal, right? So you see what I'm saying here? I won't waste too much time. Sparkle Donkey. I mean, okay. Like, I've seen Teak, actually. But, I mean, a lot of these are just lost causes, right? The Butterfly Cannon. Trace Gringos. I mean, come on, guys. Previously produced here. So I recognized a couple of these. Ed Hardy. Obviously, when a brand wants to get into something, they can do it. A lot of people do that and cross-reference. Like, Porsche here has towers in Miami. Um, Austin Martin is now doing one. And there's just... You can, if you've got a brand like at Hardy, you can do whatever you want. But uh, their tequila probably didn't go over very well. Not listed as actives. Again, there's a bunch. So you can tell you, this tells you how many people have cycled through here and tried to be in the tequila business and just didn't make it. Um, or they moved on to another distillery. But with these brands, I don't recognize one. Mission Taco Joint. Um, they probably just made some private label stuff for their place, which I respect. That's a cool move. But a lot of these here are probably just brands that didn't make it. So again, if you have any updates or information on these, Go ahead and leave the comments below. Make sure to subscribe. And uh, I appreciate you watching this and anything you know about Nam 1438 or have an opinion on El Padrino. Nejo, please leave a comment below. We appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next one.